I had to become a bokeh hoe, nothing else for just a moment. That's right, the O-O-G. Will you finally be buying the Mamiya 645? What's up y'all and thank you for joining me for this video today. Never let it be said that I'm too stubborn. Never, because I'm not. In fact, today I'm proving it by giving a camera that I long wrote off a second chance. A second chance to show me something, to blow me away. Mostly I'm giving it a second chance because I was thinking about it a lot and I was in that 645 headspace again. So I was like, let me run back the Mamiya 645. But this time around, I spent quality time with the Mamiya 645 1000S, that's right, the O-O-G. Not the old, old, oldest G, but like the second oldest G. Anyway, if you know about it, then you know about it. So you're probably thinking, why now? Why, Talia? Why are we going back? Why are we revisiting the Mamiya 645? Because it's a good camera system. More than that, I'm still shooting medium format on the streets and I'm still looking for the perfect camera to do this with. Despite what other people tell me, I still continue to shoot medium format on the street because I do what I want. Big ups to Jay the Collector. I appreciate you fam for letting me hold on to your camera for months this time because sometimes I need to really dig in there to find out if it's my camera. And sometimes I get busy and the camera sits on the, you know, on the housing for too long and I forget. But I'm sorry, man, I appreciate you. Second to none. My first item with this camera, like I said, I like to be out in the streets. I like to be shooting people, encountering people. And when you have a camera that has a unique look to it, people come to you or they come to me at least. So I went to Venice where there are the most people who are the most energetic and outgoing, friendly people ever. They want to be shot and they want to talk to you. So in the first outing to Venice, I used the waist level viewfinder and the 80 millimeter F 1.9 lens. I have to say it was all good, no complaints. I'm looking down through the viewfinder. I'm shooting it horizontally. It's all good, I'm not like too pressed. I'm having a great time. Then about, I don't know, halfway through the shoot, I decided I want to get some vertical portraits. And I figured it'd be easy enough to kind of rotate the camera with the waist level viewfinder and still kind of take the photo. That was a lie. I found that out right away. It's harder than I thought. It was not intuitive, it was not comfortable, and none of these shots worked out that I tried that way. So we're not gonna show them. However, I was still grateful to have 15 opportunities to make relatively decent photographs. My homegirl is visiting from New York. She does some modeling on the side. And I said, hey, will you jump in for me? And she's like, you know, I do this. Since I had the 80 millimeter F 1.9 lens this day, I just knew I had to blow out that bokeh. I had to become a bokeh hoe, it, nothing else for just a moment. And on this particular shot where I have it at F 1.9, I have to say I'm really impressed with the bokeh. I love how the softness goes from like, her eyebrows back towards her ears and you got like the tall grass behind her looking beautiful and blown out. Love it. I get why this lens is such a cult following. It's, it's a beautiful lens. You guys know I'm not like huge on like having fast, fast lenses, but every now and again, I too slip and go into those ways. If you're like a big bokeh fan, I highly recommend this lens. Once you have it and you dial in your focus on those eyes and blow away the rest, you're gonna be addicted. Back to this lack of verticality. It was definitely bugging me while snapping my friend. I decided for my next shoot, I would switch my viewfinder to the prism eye level viewfinder to fix this problem. And then I also figured I'd try out that 150 millimeter lens since I had it and it would be weird not to try out everything Jay gave me. So for this next portrait shoot, 
I ended up in a neighborhood I'm not sure of because I thought it was one neighborhood, but it was actually a different neighborhood. So I ended up having to location scout while I was there. It was rough. When I tell you I was in the wrong spot, I was in the wrong spot. the bat, I will say that shooting the Mamiya 645 with the 150mm lens was significantly heavier than my previous setup. Can't have everything, I accept the weight on this one. Still, being able to shoot vertically made up for the increased weight in my opinion. I didn't love this focal length, it's not one I typically shoot, and I actually wished I had put on the 80mm lens during this photo shoot because I had to be so far away from my subject to actually get him <laughs> in these shots. But nonetheless, I pressed on and put a roll through this camera as well using the setup. Special shout out to my model Tyree for coming out and helping me out on this shoot. Really appreciate you, brother. So at this point, you're probably wondering, so did you buy this camera, Talia? Will you finally be buying the Mamiya 645? No, no, I'm not buying this camera still. A lot changes over the years, but a lot stays the same. And even though this camera intrigues me for some reason, it's just not the camera for me. It's like when you're dating a guy and he's great, but you know, something feels off. He's not the one. Do you waste your time? Sorry dudes, do you waste your time still going out and shooting this camera or do you move on and try to find the one? I gotta move on and keep trying to find the one. But it was fun shooting the 645 while it lasted. I'm glad that I have the ability to borrow this camera from a friend and then give it back and not spend money to buy the whole system, but I can't commit to the Mamiya 645. More than the camera system being the issue, I think what it was, or what it comes down to, is the 645 format this time. When I was looking at the photos, I just wasn't thrilled with the limitations or the framing, I should say, of the 645. I wanted more space. And since I've been shooting six by six for over a year now, I'm accustomed to the space. And yeah, I think I may have actually missed the boat on 645. Does this mean I'll stop shooting 645? Probably not, because every now and again, I get the feeling that I'm missing out on something, an experience. A camera is in the distance calling my name. Try me, try me, try me. And I look for it and I shoot it. So I'm still open to finding a 645 camera, my version of a 645 camera, a camera that's 645 that speaks to me. I just haven't, found it yet. And plus, you know, different projects require different cameras. I may have a project one day that requires a 645 look and feel to it. When that day comes, I'll be on the hunt again. If there's a camera that you tried in the past and you didn't love, but you can't quite get it off your mind, run that thing back. Your opinion may change, your circumstances may change, your eye or your needs may change with space and time. So try it again. If you're like me and you often or have found yourself trying cameras that you've written off in the past, comment down below and let me know what you do in these circumstances. If you're not one of these people that is a bit indecisive with cameras, good for you. You're saving time and money. All right, you guys, I hope you liked this one. If you did, make sure you hit that like button for me and it helps the channel grow. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel because I would love to have you and I will see you in the next one. All right, everybody, peace.